now to our GMA Out Loud series as we celebrate Pride Month. This morning we're exploring faith and identity and what it means to come out in a religious family. It's all part of ABC's Soul of a Nation special, exploring the LGBTQ plus experience. Down in Nashville, Christian singer Nicole Serrano, raised as a preacher's daughter, is still on her road to self-acceptance. I am a gay woman. I've learned to embrace myself and learn to accept all the things that I, I work so hard and so long to change. Nicole debuting her new music video, Nice to Meet You. A medley, embracing what she says has always been inside. I had really great friends, a great support system, and I started to realize, like, okay, I am gay, and I am a Christian, and those two things can happen at the same time. Nearly half of LGBTQIA plus adults in the U.S. are religious. One of Pastor Mike's biggest concerns, those walking away from places of worship due to lack of acceptance. There are so many people who have been damaged and wounded by church, who have been hurt by church. So there's nothing wrong with unlearning and relearning, especially when it's in the name of love and healing and wholeness and hope. Who wants to show up in the world in a way where you live, you love, and you serve. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi Spiro Day, we're glad you're here today. My name is Jim Elliott. And my name is Brooke Elliott. And we're gonna talk a little bit about our spiritual journey. And like most people, um, ours is full of twists and turns. Um, I was raised by two wonderful, generous, accepting, loving atheists who gave us kids the freedom to follow whatever belief system we wanted. And um, Jim was raised originally in the Catholic Church, but your, your dad was... Uh, a recovering Catholic. A recovering Catholic, yes. And when I was 16, I went to church with a friend and I responded to an altar call. And that's how I came into the Christian faith. And so after that altar call happened, I had the experience of joining a group of people who were really interested in exploring kind of the mystery and the, the, the excitement of something new and wonderful for us. And I never forgot that feeling. Um, so then fast forward many years later to when we were married and had kids and had no clue how to raise our kids in the Christian faith. And so we were drawn to an evangelical church because they seemed to have all the answers and we needed answers. So it suited us really well. Um, but over time, that, that sort of dualistic thinking that this is right, this is wrong. And one of the things that was wrong um, for that church was to be part of the LGBTQIA community. And so over time, that kind of thinking just became really distasteful for us. And we just distance ourselves more and more. And we like to think that God was changing our thinking in preparation for the fact that our son later let us know that he is part of the LGBTQIA community. And by that time, we had really moved on in our thinking. So we were not part of that church anymore. We were in a different place. And it, it was easy to affirm him and, and support him and say, you be you. So that was a wonderful thing for us. So when we came to Nashville, it was very important to us that we find a church that is fully affirming. And we, we found that in Spiro Day. And Spiro Day offers um, a place where people are exploring and, and learning about their faith as they discover their true selves. Spirituality is dynamic and, and always changing and doesn't fit into a uh, fossilized, static, uh, doctrinal box. Uh, Spiro Day reflects one of the forever truths of life on earth, and that's shift happens. <laughs> So if you're looking for a church that is right and wrong, black and white, um, in or out, Sparrow Day is not your church. Uh, Sparrow Day, Day is a church that loves God, loves people, and seeks to embrace the mystery of this wonderful person of Jesus Christ and this faith of Christianity. So I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Welcome. You know, the Bible doesn't talk about sexual orientation or gay relationships in the way that we experience them or understand them today. It really doesn't. Jesus never taught about it. No, none of the New Testament writers talked about gay relationships in the way that we understand it or experience it today. And yet, so many Christians uh, think it does, and they're not even, but they're not even sure where in the scriptures it's talked about. Uh, but it really doesn't talk about it in the way that we understand it today. You know, there are 31,102 verses in the entire Bible, the Old and New Testament, and any conversation that happens today about LGBTQ issues and Christianity, the Bible, they come from only six very obscure, quirky context, even hard to interpret passages. So all the discussions that the church is having today about being gay and gay inclusion come from only six verses. Now, I know some of you are going, really? I, you know, my church or my minister or pastor uh, told me that it's very clear and clearly wrong in the scriptures. 
Now I want to ask you a question that I want you to be intellectually honest with yourself right now. So forget whatever you've been taught about LGBTQ and then Christianity. Just ditch that for a moment. Do you know what those six verses are? Do you know where there are? Do you know where even one of them is? Do you have an understanding of the Hebrew language? Do you have an understanding of Greek language? Do you understand the historic context that any of these six verses were written and contextually what the writer is talking about at the time? Well, none of these six verses address any of the issues that we experience in a modern way and what it means to be gay in any way. Yet these six verses in popular Christianity are used all the time to have this discussion. And when these six verses get weaponized or they're used to thump people in the LGBTQ community, it just does deep, deep damage. And this damage doesn't have to happen be, especially when someone doesn't have a true understanding of these verses. So I want to show you those verses real quick. Take a look. There they are. Of course, I won't read them, but that's where they are. And what can happen is people can use these verses. They can weaponize these verses. They can use these verses to thump people uh, who have an intrinsic natural orientation and who are gay. And um, it just continues, when these verses are used very biblicistically, very simplistically, and very literally, just the words, just what they said, and using them out of context, uh, they can do great damage to people. They have done great damage to people. Now, I realize um, people debate these verses. At Sparrow Day, we don't. There's, there's no debate on this issue at Sparrow Day. But in recent decades, there has been some amazing scholarship, some amazing scholarship in history and languages and theology when it comes to an understanding of these verses. And yet, there is nothing in these verses that at all addresses what we understand of what it means to be gay today. I want to show you some quotes from some scholars here. Take a look at these. Martin H. Woodstra says, there is nothing in the Old Testament that corresponds to sexual orientation as we understand it today. New Testament scholar Victor Paul Furnish says, there is no text on gay orientation in the Bible. And then biblical scholar Robin Scrogg, she further adds, biblical judgments against a person's sexual orientation are not relevant to today's debate. They should no longer be used, not because the Bible is not authoritative, but simply because it does not address the issues involved. And so I just want to encourage us all that there is a different way of looking at all of this. And to all of you who are part of the Sparrow Day community, to those of you who are part of our LGBTQ community, I just want to thank you that you are part of this church. And I hope you feel wholly and solely affirmed in who you are and who you are as a gay person. You are fully loved here, you are fully accepted here, and you are fully affirmed here. We go beyond welcoming. And for those of you who are straight here, who love our LGBTQ community, there are people that you love who have been hurt 
um, by a different kind of Christianity that has been weaponized towards people you love. I am so glad that you are part of this community and that we are one community. Good morning, Sparrow Day from Wisconsin, right outside of Milwaukee in Menominee Falls. Um, we miss you so much, uh, but Kennedy and Hudson and I, we just wanted to pop on. Um, David emailed me and Kelly and I did an interview with him last year and he wanted to uh, show that again to you today. So I said, of course. Um, so enjoy, we miss you Sparrow Day, we miss our family, um, and hopefully we'll come back and visit soon. All right, can you say bye? Bye. Bye. Well, I am here with Jen and Kelly, and I think the first thing I want to say to you guys, and really on behalf of Liz too, that we, we love you guys so much, and we are so thankful uh, that you are part of our church. And in fact, you guys, are, are one of the original families of our church. You're one of the founding uh, families. Don't make us sound too old. <laughs> You're young though, yes. So, uh, but we do. We're, we're so, uh, we're grateful that you, not only are here, but that, that you're willing to be part of this uh, conversation. Because your family, I'll say this about your family, and it really relates to my first question. And this has been ever since I've known you guys, that your family, and I've only known you as a family, that's how I met you, mm -hmm. um, your family just expresses a fortitude. There's this sense of strength to it, but that is then you just have, you just give off this very sense of love and closeness. Um, and so where does that, where does that come from? because it's so evident. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it comes from our families and our parents. I think we learned it at a young age. Um, strong foundation, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and we've had a lot of support and love from our parents and grew up with, you know, extended family with us. And so we've seen what it's like to have an influence, not just from your parents, but your grandparents. Yeah. How important that is to your rock and your foundation, the way you want to be a parent and uh, raise your own children. Right. And you got, how, how long have you guys been together and, and tell how many kids you guys have? Okay, so we've been married six years. In August. In August. <laughs> six years in August and we have Kennedy who's four. And a half. And a half. And Hudson's <laughs> turning one on Saturday. This, right, this weekend. Yeah. Well, you, got, you guys just have a beautiful, beautiful Thank you. family. Thank you. Um, so, Kelly, you had mentioned, you know, what we experience with your family mm -hmm. comes from your own, own. So here you guys are, you, you are a gay family. So what, um, what's, it, what's it been like to experience the support of your family? Because certainly as a Christian minister over the years, I've talked to a number of gay people in our community that that is not what happens. So what's it like? I guess two questions. What's it like to experience the support of your families? And then what's it like to then be part of a church that's affirming and supportive? What's that like? Well, I think that um, everything that we've been surrounded with has always been an extension of our family. So Kelly's position, uh, her job, her associate head coach position, her, her team is our family. Mm -hmm. Our church, we think of that as our family. So because we grew up with a loving and accepting extended family, I think that we continue to place ourselves in situations where we surround ourselves with more family. My, my position, uh, my work, the people that I've met through the Y are my family. So I think that no matter what, we just find um, ourselves surrounded by all of that. Mm. And, and what you've experienced, and you guys probably, um, I mean, you guys, you're intelligent, you have great sense of awareness and experience. So not all gay people and not all gay families, especially when it comes to Christianity and the Christian church, 
have experienced the same affirmation, the same support. And just my experience as a minister, again, talked to so many mm -hmm. gay people who have been hurt yeah. by the church or hurt in, in realms of, of faith. And they're wary of the church or Christianity. And I totally, totally get it. Yeah. So when you guys tell your friends in the LGBTQ community that you're part of your church and you right. love your church, what, what goes on there? What happens well, there? Well, it's, it's, it's funny because usually people will say, you guys go to church? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and like, well, we, we, where do you go? You know, that's the first question because you know so many gay couples with families, so many um, single people looking for a connection with their faith don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. And I think by word of mouth, it's starting to get out in our community um, where you can go and that Sparrow Day is accepting and that we feel like a family within a family. And I think it's, it's not about you know anything other than being yourself where you are. It's mm -hmm. good. Well, as I, I end with how I began, so there is, there is just this aura that just comes from your family. When I see your family uh, bound into the church, or Kelly, you peel in on two right. wheels, <laughs> That's more like uh, it. Uh, trying to get the kids into our program, you know, just such great things just fly off your family. So when you think of your family where it is, and then you think of the future, what, what is the hope that you guys have for your your family, your two beautiful kids. Yeah. Um, I think that, that our hope for our family is that, that our kids will always be treated with loving kindness um, and that they will always feel that they are valued and loved as individuals and that our family dynamic doesn't change the way anyone sees them maybe even enhances mm -hmm. how they see them. But it's really, really important for Kelly and I that our kids are given as much love and opportunity as every other child. Mm -hmm. And so our, you know, we really hope that the future is about them mm -hmm. and we'll do whatever we can to support them and guide them in that path, just as our family did for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you two are wonderful parents. It shows you <laughs> two beautiful kids. Your kids are beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, and we love you, and we're so glad that you're part of Sparrow Day. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to the Sparrow Day LGBT, community. I just want to say I am so grateful that you are part of our church and I pray and I hope you feel fully affirmed here at our church and feel loved and when we say everyone's welcome we mean everybody is beyond welcome. You are affirmed. Now I realize some of you out there, um, especially in the LGBTQ community, um, the whole church thing can be very confusing. That's why I'm glad there is this organization called Church Clarity. And this is an organization that helps give clarity to the LGBTQ community, especially when it comes to spiritual things and Christianity, because there's a lot of ambiguity out there. He goes to a church that says everybody's welcomed, of course, right? A church wants to welcome people. And then he gets there, and when he wants to live and be his true self, they go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. No, you can't. We don't fully affirm who you are. And so what that is, is that's ambiguous. When churches are ambiguous this way, somebody gets part of this church, loves this church, is growing spiritually, loves the people there, wants to get involved, and then bam, uh, something comes and they're deeply, deeply hurt. So what Church Clarity does is Church Clarity uh, helps clear this up. And so you can go to churchclarity.com. You can look up any church in the country or a lot of churches in the country and say, are they clear on this issue? Are they for it? Are they against it? Are they ambiguous? And I'm so 
thankful that Church Clarity about Sparrow Day says we're for it. We affirm uh, LGBTQ uh, people and we are clear about that. So one of the things they do is they give suggestions that um, when you're talking to a church leader or a church minister, how to ask that question and how not to ask that question so you can be very clear about where this church stands. So I'm gonna share some things with you right from their website. So say you walk into a church and you like the church, but you wanna know where they stand on this issue. So here's what they first say. Don't ask this. Don't ask, do you welcome, accept, or include LGBTQ people in your church? Don't ask the question that way. Why? Because ministers, pastors, church leaders love to say, listen, everybody's welcome here. And I really believe that there are well-meaning people, good-hearted people that say, listen, everybody is welcome here. So then a gay person goes and they sense that, that they're welcome, but then the church is not ultimately affirming. It's not really going to affirm or fully accept um, who they are as gay people. Uh, they won't be able to be married in the church. Uh, they won't be able to serve in any kind of position or leadership in the church. Um, and the ambiguity hurts because they go, wait, I, I thought I was welcome here. And what happens is they ultimately feel they're not. I wasn't really welcomed. If you welcomed me, I would have full affirmation. So don't ask the question that way because you'll get, of course, all are welcome. Everybody's welcome. Instead, Church Clarity says, ask the question this way. Ask, do your policies allow LGBTQ folks to be baptized in your church? Can you get married here? Are there any restrictions on how LGBTQ folks can participate in this church? Can an LGBTQ person be on staff on this church? Can an LGBTQ person get married here, be openly gay here? Um, and I'm so glad that Sparrow Day, we fully affirm an LGBTQ person at our church can fully serve in any position at Sparrow Day, fully volunteer at Sparrow Day, of course be openly gay at Sparrow Day. They can get married here. They can be blessed here. Their children can be baptized and dedicated here. An LGBTQ person can be on staff here. An LGBTQ person can be a minister or a board member or an elder at Sparrow Day, and I'm so grateful to be part of a church like this. So I just wanna say as I close to all the LGBTQ people part of Sparrow Day, thank you that you're here. And I hope and pray you feel fully affirmed. I also wanna say that uh, if in your past you have experienced church damage, uh, God damage, because the Bible or a Christian perspective was weaponized uh, against you, um, not only am I sad, I just give a collective, man, I'm so, so sorry, so, so sorry. And I want to encourage you that um, you are fully loved and uh, affirmed and accepted here. To those of you who are straight at Sparrow Day, but you love being part of a church that loves the people you love because you have gay children, you have gay siblings, you have gay relatives, you have gay parents, you have gay friends or workmates. And part of the full expression of your faith is you need to know that you are part of a Christianity and you are part of a church that fully affirms the people that you love. And you need a church to be safe for the people you love. So thank you for being here and all the support you give.
And finally, to those of you who in your heart, when you listen to our couples and families today, when you even listen to some of the things that I'm sharing, your heart resonates with this. Whether you're gay or straight, you go, yes, yes. But you haven't been in environments where you can fully express that. I just want I just want to let you know that there is a new kind of Christianity awakening. And there are more and more places, there are more and more people, there are more and more scholars and theologians and ministers and churches, there are more and more just people in the byways and the highways of life that are like you, that resonate with what you resonate and are awakening and expressing a kind of Christianity that your heart is in union with. So you have the permission to move and to leave those environments that don't resonate with you. And I want to encourage you that there are people that look at the world and look at faith the way that you are beginning to look at it. God, I want to thank you for the LGBTQ community that are part of Sparrow Day and the LGBT uh, community or any person listening to us through this web. I hope that you will find that deep sense of place and presence in their heart that your love will co collide with them and that they would know to the depths of their being that they are fully loved for who they are and whether we are gay or straight or trans or whatever we are that we are fully loved and you have made us the way we have been made and we are to be true to who that is. So I pray for our LGBT community that they would continue to stand and stand strong, that they would continue to move and be true to who they are. We thank you for the LGBTQ pilgrims in the past who have been courageous and have stood and had a voice uh, to bring us all to where we are today. We thank you for the courageous people of the past. And I've been with so many of my gay friends that look at this generation coming up and they are just so excited that gay and trans people are now living in a world that has a different kind of acceptance than what previous generations have experienced. And God, I pray for the Christian church and Christian clergy that more and more and more would awaken to full inclusion, to full understanding, that less and less would use the scriptures to, to weaponize and to thump anybody in a way that is non-accepting, non-loving, non-affirming. And I pray, God, that you would be with us all in this. We just ask for more faith, more hope, more love, these three things that ultimately matter. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a fountain Heal to the bone and the 
sweet to my soul and I'm swept away Well, that's our service for today. I hope that it meant something to you. My name is Mallory Polk and I am the preschool director here at the Little Sparrows. And I just want to let you know that this conversation really hits home to me personally. Um, I'm not sure that I could be a part of a church or a community in which um, didn't love the people that I love, my family members and my friends that I hold so dearly. And so I'm just so thankful for this space here. Sit there while I tell you just how beautiful you look tonight As if you haven't heard me say it about a hundred times You shake your head and look away I promise that I've tried my hardest to let go of this But every time I think about a world without you in it my life becomes a darker shade of gray Hey, hey And all I wanna do Is make you smile When darkness still ensues I wanna be alive Whatever we go through I'll make it worth your while Every minute, every hour, every day I wanna make you smile 
phone staring while I tell you that you're all I need. And even though I know you know that I'm a fighting me, I'm gonna keep on showing you exactly what I If there comes